It's September, a period in which many back-to-school campaigns are launched around the world. A marketing effort run by retailers to coincide with the start of the school year. The main goal is attracting students, parents and teachers to purchase school-related products and services. And of course, in today's fast-paced digital world, having an affordable yet reliable laptop for everyday computing needs is essential. I haven't been a student for a while, but I decided to test something. I was looking for a laptop that is used for school and it's not a Chromebook, and I found on eBay a very cheap one, a HP Stream 11 for $15, but without working touchpad and no charger in the box. Let's check what this 4 year old laptop is capable of nowadays and can I fix the touchpad? A little bit of history first, I was not aware of this laptop, but I took some time to research. The HP Stream series is a line of budget friendly laptops produced by HP that are designed for basic computing tasks and portability. Each model within the series is named with a combination of HP Stream and a number that usually corresponds to the screen size. So, HP Stream 11 specifically refers to a laptop with an 11.6 inch display size. HP has also released other laptops in the Stream series with different screen sizes such as the HP Stream 13 and HP Stream 14 which have 13.3 inch and 14 inch displays respectively. These laptops share some common characteristics such as affordability and basic hardware specifications but they may vary in terms of screen size, design and other features. They are known for their compact size, affordable price and their use of the Windows operating system, making them appealing options for students and users looking for basic computing devices. The first HP Stream laptops, HP Stream 11 and 14, were released in September 2014. The exact model today is HP Stream 11-AK0508SA. With bidding and low interest from other buyers, I was able to get it from eBay for around $15 without the shipping cost. Let's inspect it. Obviously, the first thing to notice is the color. It immediately caught the eye of all my female friends and colleagues at work when they saw it. It's cute. And port-wise is not bad at all. It has two USB-A ports, one from each side, a Type-C, an HDMI, a micro SD slot and audio jack. Quite enough. The screen size is 11.6 inch with resolution of 1366 by 768. It's a small resolution, but okay for such a small display. 768p is a typical resolution for this class of laptops. The picture quality is low, especially the viewing angles. I can't show you what the maximum brightness is because the corresponding function buttons on the keyboard don't work. I can't set the brightness from the window settings too. This is likely a software issue and appears to be typical trend for this laptop. Before I bought the laptop, when I read that there was a problem with the touchpad, I thought that maybe opening it and cleaning it would fix the problem. It is very rare for laptops to have problems with the touchpad. When I got the laptop, I did the first logical thing and looked for a solution on YouTube. It turned out that the problem was related to drivers and many people commented that after two years of a non-working touchpad, they finally solved their problems. I downloaded all automatic Windows updates available. I also installed official software from HP website that is supposed to download the correct drivers. I tried a third party driver installer too and yet the touchpad didn't work. To make sure that the issue is not in the hardware I took a flash drive with some old Linux distro which I don't even remember which one it is. It turned out to be Linux Mint based on Ubuntu and the touchpad worked without any additional software installation. I didn't even connect the distro to internet. So the HP Stream is laptop that is created for Windows but can't even run the touchpad. A great achievement. It is by no means easy to achieve. When I manually download the correct driver from the HP website, as shown in all YouTube videos on the topic, for some reason I can't install it or it's not working. I need time to resolve the issue, but for now I'm moving on. Keep this in mind if you are planning to buy this laptop. I am not sure when was this laptop released, but the CPU is from end of 2019. 
It is an Intel Celeron N4020, a low-power dual-core processor designed for entry-level laptops and mobile devices. It is part of Intel's Gemini Lake series of processors, which are based on the 14 nanometer manufacturing process. It has two CPU cores and two threads, which means it doesn't support hyperthreading. The base clock speed of the N4020 is typically 1.1 GHz, but it can achieve burst frequencies up to 2.8. The burst frequency allows the processor to temporarily increase its performance for short bursts of time when needed. The processor features Intel UHD Graphics 600, which is an integrated graphics solution. While it's not designed for gaming or heavy graphics workloads, it can handle basic graphics tasks and video playback. The TDP of the N4020 is relatively low, usually around 6 watts. This low power consumption makes it suitable for fanless and passively cooled laptops, contributing to longer battery life. The Intel Celeron N4020 is not designed for demanding tasks such as gaming, video editing, or 3D rendering. Instead, it is intended for basic computing needs like web browsing, word processing, email, and media consumption. I wanted to run Cinebench to test the performance, but I couldn't install it because the laptop does not meet the minimum requirements. The other specs of the laptop are just 2GB of DDR4 memory and just 32GB eMMC for operating system and storage. This type of drive is cheaper but can't provide the same level of performance and longevity as SSDs, which are found in higher-end laptops. With a clean installation of the operating system, Without installing additional software, the free space left is only 8GB. Extremely low, which means the laptop is intended to be used primarily with online software such as Google Docs, Office 365 and so on. A lot can be done in the browser nowadays, so I don't think it's a problem. You can even edit photos and videos in Canva or CapCut. But more tabs require more RAM, so no expectations for epic stuff. The keyboard of the HP Stream 11 is fine, a standard laptop keyboard with a chiclet style design and no backlight. Chiclet style keyboards have individual, closely spaced keys that resemble the shape and size of chiclet's gum, hence the name. This Stream 11 has a webcam with awful quality. Not that the screen showing the camera feed is great, but for YouTube is fine. For a big Hollywood movie with nice cinematography or visual effects, watching with this laptop will not be the most optimal experience. But YouTube is fine. After one hour of watching a full screen, YouTube 720p video and low brightness, battery charge dropped with 18% from 97% to 79%. This is of course not the most scientific test. And battery condition varies from laptop to laptop. This model has a 2-cell 37.69 watt-hour Li-ion battery. What about gaming? There is nothing to comment at all. I didn't even bother to install Steam. Performance aside, newer games require more and more disk space. I recently installed Starfield on another machine. It took up about 120 gigabytes of storage or more than three times the whole disk of, of Steam 11. What can I say in conclusion? I like the Stream 11 because I understand its budget-friendly nature and its suitability for basic computing needs. But I don't like the driver's headache. Of course, the price also matters. You get what you paid for. The model has its own quirks, mostly from a software perspective, but for office documents and watching videos, it's okay. It can be used for some Linux experiments too. I paid $15 for the laptop and 10 more for a charger. So around $25. You can't get more for this price. However, the limitation is not so much in terms of power, but in terms of available storage. I hope you found the video useful or interesting. See you in the next one. Bye.